nowadays especially with this like victim mentality that's quite pervasive um and traumas and all the rest of it um there's this thing where like even if you try and push this idea of self-development improving yourself um trying to increase people's demand by telling them to do certain things there's a some level of pushback sometimes that you're being insensitive you don't understand the other person which that's fair enough in terms of the rulings are the rulings you're speaking in generalities but just this power to change i feel like at its core islam is all about the power to change the power to transform look at like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the transformation in uh, those societies and the companions so uh, i wanted your thoughts on that because it's like key to islam that everyone can change because otherwise it feels like heaven and hell is based on allah's mercy but also your deeds and what you do the very foundations of islam and your practice is kind of minimized if you fall into this mindset of like you know the lie of meritocracy and that's different that's linked to like going up in society and stuff but this idea that how much you can do from a personal level is somewhat limited by your uh, past your history your family your societal kind of structure just yeah. if you could um, share some thoughts on that please oh that's a really important thing and obviously, you know, there's two extremes and usually the truth is somewhere in between them, right? So, I mean, uh, and that's not to muddy the waters. I mean, we can look at society now and we can look at the discourse and we can identify which extreme is prevalent, right? So uh, in America, I mean, where I'm born and raised, there's, there's definitely a, a, a big ethic in society that is one ex extreme. That is like the, the bootstraps mythology, right? Like every single person, no matter what, can pull themselves by, up by their bootstraps and succeed and be a billionaire and whatever. That's why. And this, this kind of mythology is reinforced. I, I just came across, you know, these stupid Facebook sponsored posts, you know, that creep into your newsfeed. Um, you know, it was like, I can, someone was like, I can identify, you know, future billionaires, right? And it's like, well, that is quite a metaphysical statement, right? Because you're saying that to be a billionaire, it's dependent upon internal qualities and not, well, did my parents like give me a million dollars in seed money for my startup corporation, right? Like, so in, in the United States, we have this real crazy ethic that's, that was dominant for many decades, which is kind of like, everything is meritocracy and everything is your ability. And if you're poor and you failed or something, then it's your fault. Like it's like a, an ethical, you know, decision that you made or the result of poor choices that you made. Okay. So coming from our context, yeah, that's definitely, that is still present in society. However, however, and this is why, this is why it's important to base society upon guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always just and perfectly tempered. It doesn't go too much to this side or too much to this side. Cause what happens is with people, people will go to one extreme. And then people will get so fed up with that extreme, they're going to swing to the other extreme. And that's what happens. And that's the story of American society in so many facets. And this is one of them. So for decades and decades, having this like, well, you, you know, if you ended up on the street or you have whatever, a crappy job, it's your fault. You decided it, you chose it, you did it. No sort of outside structures. You can't blame anybody else but you. Now what do we have? Now we have the opposite that's starting to gain foothold, especially in universities and liberal culture, where that everything is about being a victim. Everything's about trauma. Everything's about, and, and that dovetails also with, uh, your identity, whether it's a racial identity, whether it's a, a sexual identity, whether it's a gender identity, whatever it is, it defines and delimits the things that are possible for you to say and think. And this is ridiculous and it's completely un -Islamic. To, and it's it, the saddest thing is seeing Muslims participate in this, trying to shut down people because of the color of their skin, because of their gender, or because of their sexual orientation. The Prophet Muhammad was a man, and he was a Qurayshi man, a Qurayshi man. He was from the elite tribe. Despite his, his individual circumstances as being a, an orphan and et cetera, et cetera, he was from the powerful tribe, the ruling class tribe, okay? So if we're going to assume a non-Muslim sort of theory of power where all power is bad, all power corrupts, okay, <coughs> pardon me, you know, yeah, it, people don't realize what they're doing by falling 
prey to these sorts of ideas, they're undermining their faith. Because if you take this as gospel, if you take this as the truth, that, okay, your identity or your positionality determines the things that you can possibly say, then you're going to come to a day where you're going to start to doubt the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his ability to guide you because he was a man, because he was a uh, cis, because he was straight, because he was part of the, you know, the, the Qurayshi tribe or, or whatever. Why should we be surprised? That's the, the result of the logic that we planted. If we're going to say that, well, you're saying this because you're white or you're saying this because you're uh, this or that. No, we have rich companions. We have poor companions. We have companions from nobility and we have companions from, you know, that were slaves. We have the whole gamut, right? And so we need, we need to be careful and we need uh, that balanced middle where, you know, and this is the thing too, you know, I've been thinking a lot more and my wife does more of the reading when it comes to kind of, uh, we homeschool our children. And so we, my wife does a lot of reading on child development and education and these sorts of things. I wish I had time to read everything she reads too. Excuse me. <coughs> but one of the things she was reading recently is about trauma. And if you look at the lives of the companions, they experienced horrors, right? The life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They experienced some horrible things. And yet, it did not limit them or hamper them or hold them back from, achieve, from, from achieving great heights when it comes to their personal lives, their relationships, their you know moral and spiritual lives, their religious lives, all these sorts of different things. Because we've neglected trauma for so long, at least in the United States, now we've come to the point where we almost um, turn trauma into a god. Where we, if somebody experiences something that's particularly hard, we victimize them. And we act as if there's no possible way to get past it. Or there's no possible way that this person is just like damaged goods like for, the, for you know, forever. And this is outside of my field. Uh, so I'm not going to speak super confidently on it. But... I just from a, a, a broader paradigm perspective, we need to carefully think about these issues and we need to explore what was it about the companions and what was it about the Prophet that they could endure such hardship and horrifying. Some of them were tortured, right? Horrifying things. Some of them saw their parents tortured. I'm not saw his parents murdered in front of him when he was a kid. And yet, you know, it's not just being about functional, right? It's like they're, they're whole human beings that are able to develop and able to achieve and able to, to live, you know, productive, normal lives and, and be well adjusted. What's going on there, right? Are we treating trauma in the same sort of way from an Islamic paradigm? We have to just be super careful that we don't get caught up in reacting to the previous kind of paradigm that was dominant here in the West and swing into the opposite extreme and um, doing something that's going to undermine our faith or contradict certain things in our faith. So I think that speaks a little bit too. Yeah. Jazakallah khair.